I'm building an RPG in Minecraft coded with fully custom mechanics. But how do we build the world itself? Let's get started. Returning viewers may be asking themselves, World Building Wednesday? Hold on. Isn't that... At the end of the video? And yes, my astute friends, but today's devlog won't be a World Building Wednesday for the entire, entire time. Time, time, time. So buckle up, gamers. Phase 1 of Project Riptide will follow a contractor of a mining guild known as Pick Fortune. This company is a powerful presence in a country with no central government. Many citizens rely on this company for safety, pay, and the general ability to make a living. But their power makes them a polarizing figure. You, the player, will be sent into the world to investigate a depreciating asset. A water mill has lost contact with central command and has ceased output. Your job is to find out why and get the water mill back up and running. And in a Devon's Nest first, we're going to be building on camera. That's right, World Building Wednesday Live. And there are two main things I want to talk about, sightlines and information. And to do that, we're going to have to outline. So the start of this build is actually going to just have us using wool and different colors to set how the build is going to look and feel like. Pink wool is going to represent the terrain and is arguably one of the most important colors we're going to be using here because the terrain and other things around it are going to be able to direct and point the player's attention towards certain areas. Depending on how we build, we can communicate with the player certain things without even having to tell them. We don't need to tell them to go here because the terrain will do that for us. And so what we're working on here is the centerpiece for our main hub area. This is going to be where the water mill is and where the players are going to have their objective established. They're going to turn around a corner and see this water mill front and center and everything else that follows. And very important information before we go on. Look at that water wheel. Look at it go. Oh my, it's just, just creating energy out of, out of physics. Oh my god. Water wheels are the supreme aesthetic. Steampunk? Nah. Water wheel core. Water punk. Oh my, look at it go. Okay, 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 okay. So by now we've established the reveal and we're starting to get an idea of how this level is coming together, what it's going to feel like, and what it's trying to convey uh, with just wool, with just an outline. And before we start actually placing down blocks, I just want to show how uh, this green wool that represents trees, we can use this blue wool to represent water, uh, black wool to represent another building, all of these things sort of come together to guide the player's sight lines and uh, what they're going to notice first and what they're going to think about. And now we're just working on establishing our color palette and visual style, actually placing down blocks that are going to be sticking around. What we're working on is a custom biome that doesn't even exist in vanilla Minecraft. Imagine a dry canyon top side, lots of just clay, rocks, and sand with a lush, muddy valley kind of nestled into the, into the cracks of this canyon. So as we're placing blocks and even dotting down some trees, we're starting to get an idea, a real idea of what our custom biome is going to feel like, and I think it's really coming together. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this. Look at this. What? What? How? Okay. Okay, so we've built up the walls of our little canyon area, our main hub area, and we're gonna have to start the building. We've been holding it off. We built this farmhouse a while back, uh, sort of at the start of the project. We're gonna use that as sort of the inspiration for the general build palette and go from there. There are two distinct parts of this building. One is going to be the water mill side. It's a bit more open air. And it's where all the manufacturing is going to happen. The other is sort of an office space where the managers of the water mill are going to inhabit and do all the paperwork and business side of all that, all that nonsense. And it's going to come together in one cohesive build. However, what we can do is add visual distinction between the two sections. On the left, we have a more open air rounded type of building with a very unique roof style. And on the right we have a more squared off concentrated brick type of section and it's going to create this nice little joined building and then a bit of detailing here a bit of detailing there and we have a pretty good representation of what our main hub is going to look like and as promised from earlier 
How about a quick little time lapse? But this isn't your everyday normal time lapse. No, this is an emotionally realistic time lapse. But yeah, I'm really proud of how this turned out. Let's go take a tour. As you can probably see, we did accomplish what we set out to do. We have this entrance tunnel to this section, and the player's gonna turn around the corner and be led sort of by the trees and all the different kinds of terrain to center their vision on the water mill, and especially with this slightly distinct color that we've chosen with the, uh, with the oak, their attention is gonna be brought straight to the wheel and they're going to know exactly where they are. Let's take a look at the water mill itself though. We have a little structure kind of holding up this aqueduct uh, that's feeding into the uh, the water wheel from a natural reservoir. Uh, we have a nice little little bit of foliage dotted around. Uh, you can probably tell not everything's done and that's for two reasons. One, it's convenient for me <laughs> and, and two, I, I don't want to show too much of what is actually going to happen gameplay wise and if I um, if I build too much of the little the other details uh, available in the in this map, it'll be spoilers. You guys will already know what's happening before the map's even out. But yeah, let's uh, continue the tour over here. Let's uh, just hop inside. We have three different uh, different stories, all pretty simple. Uh, the top one kind of opening up a little bit. Uh, but you might have noticed this little detail. I quite like this. If you edit the dirt tag in your uh, data pack, you'll be able to add blocks to uh, a bunch of different functionalities, uh, one of which would be uh, where you can plant grass. So I can plant grass now on these types of slabs uh, pretty easily. You can do that with World Edit, but this makes it a lot easier during the building phase, and it also makes it immune to things like block updates, so they're not just popping out everywhere if you place... If, if you do anything that might disrupt it, but yeah. Let's take a look over here. There's two different levels here. You can kind of see uh, this kind of looks down uh, into a lower section where some manufacturing might happen. And this is sort of maybe where the maintenance for the uh, the turn, uh, the turn, I don't know terms that well. Term, spin, 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 zi doodles, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where, where you can kind of just look over the maintenance of the water wheel. Uh, and yeah, I, I quite like the lecterns as a railing. Nice little splash of color and then a very, uh, very unique shape that we don't get in a lot of blocks. Something I might do is take out the red texture, this book texture on the uh, the sides there, uh, just to keep it a little, little more plain. But yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed this little dig into my, my building process and maybe even have picked up a little trick or two. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. My name has been Devin. Like, subscribe, do all the things, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.